Okay, now today we're going to talk about symbolic logic and truth tables. Uh, this is a favorite topic to talk about. Um, so first of all, let's introduce some symbols um, before we get into the tables. Okay, so the symbol for and when we're dealing with symbolic logic is going to be like the capital A without the crossbar. Okay, the symbol for or is going to be like a capital V. And then the symbol that we use for negation is going to be the tilde. Okay, like what we talked about when we were dealing, dealing with set notation, set theory. Um, I had mentioned something about the negation. So a tilde is what we use in logic to neg to show a negation of a statement. So if we have a statement A, we would put a tilde in front of it to say not A, okay, or the opposite of A. You can remember the first two symbols by relating them to the shapes uh, for the union and intersection that we talked about in set theory, okay? So A with the and, A and B, would be the element that exists in both sets, which would be the intersection. And likewise, the V, A, V, B, or A or B, would be the element that exists in either one or the other sets or in the union of the two sets. So when we're working with sets, we use the rounded version of the symbols. When we're dealing with uh, logic or logical statements connected by and and or, we use the pointy versions, okay? Okay, so let's look at example 15 here. It says, translate the statement into symbolic notation. Let P represent I like Pepsi, and let C represent I like Coke. So A is I like Pepsi or Coke. So it's an or statement, so we're going to use the V. So it would be P, V, C. Uh, B, I like Pepsi and I like Coke would be P with the um, with the uh, carrot, if you will, the up the A without the crossbar with the C. So it'd be P and C. Okay. And then C is I do not like Pepsi. So if the statement is P, I like Pepsi, and I'm saying the opposite of that, then I would say tilde P for for I do not like Pepsi. Um, D is it is not the case that I like Pepsi or Coke. So in this case, I'm negating. So it is not the case that is a negation. So it, and I'm negating the, the or, right? So I would put P, Pepsi or Coke, like I, I like Pepsi or Coke in parentheses, and I'm negating that. So that's why D is, has the parentheses around P or V. And then the tilde is out in front. And then E is I like Pepsi and I do not like Coke. So this is negating just the Coke part with an, with an and statement. So it's going to be P and not C, which is what we have written in, in, in E below. Okay. Now, as you can see, we can use parentheses to organize more complicated statements. And so there is a hierarchy or dominance with logical um, connectors, okay? So now try it number two says, try it now two says, translate, we have carrots or we will not make soup. Okay, so it's an or statement. So we're gonna use C is we have carrots and S is we will make soup. Okay, so in this case here, we're saying it's an or statement, and we're saying we have carrots, or, so that's going to be C, or we will, um, we will not make soup. So if the statement S is we will make soup, then we're saying not S. And so that's the way we would uh, write it. All right. So now because complex Boolean statements can get tricky to think about, we can create a truth table to keep track of the truth values for the simple statements um, that make the complex statement true or false. So a truth table is a tool that we use 
in order to find, figure out the truth value of any kind of statement, no matter how complex it is. Okay, so let's look at example 16. Okay, so notice it says, suppose you're picking out a new couch and your significant other says, get a sectional or something like a chase. This is a complex statement made by two simpler conditions. It is a sectional and has a chase. Okay, so for simplicity, we're going to let S be to designate it is a sectional and C will designate has a chase. Okay, so the truth table, we always start with the simple ones. This, so we look at the combination of the simple statements, right? So we always start with S and C in this case, or P and Q. So when we're looking at a com combination, we always start with the combination of truth and false. So if we look at S and C, we want to write down all possible truth values that we could have connecting S and C. So we could have them both be true. We could have S be true and C be false, or we could have S be false and C be true, or we could have them both be false. Those are the, the four possible outcomes. So the first thing we do is write down all possible outcomes of the truth values, okay? And so the easiest way to do that is always write down for the first one, half true and half false. And then after that, the second one, we would take the, the top true that are true and we would make half of those true and half of those false, which is what we do here. And then we do the same thing with the two falses, okay? And so that'll give us, that pattern will always give us all possible truth values, okay? Now in the truth table, notice how S or C, right? is what we're looking to find the truth value. Notice how S or C is only false when both of the simple statements are false. This is a, a characteristic of or statements, okay? So think about it. When can you call someone a liar when they're using or statement? If I say I'm going to the movies or I'm hanging out with my friends, the only time you could say that I lied to you is if I don't do either one right? So as long as I do at least one of them, then you can't say I lied, okay? So remember that, okay? The or, and also remember the or is not exclusive here, okay? So, uh, okay. Now, in the previous example uh, about the couch, the truth table was really just summarizing what we already know about the or statement work. Okay, the truth table for the basic and or not statements are shown. Okay, so notice for the and, so here's the other thing to, to help you remember about and statements. Notice how and statements are only true when both of the component statements are true. Otherwise, it's false. So the only time that you... Um, cannot be called a liar is if you do both of them. So if I say, hey, I'm going to the movies and I'm hanging out with my friends, the only time you could say I lied to you is if I don't do either one. Okay, so in order for an and statement to be true, both of the component statements that comprise the and statement must be true. As opposed to the or statement, no, notice how the or statement is like the opposite. The only time you can say that, uh, that it, the only time an or statement is false is when both of the component statements are false, okay? So when you do a truth table, and statements are always T, F, 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 or statements are always T, 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 F. And then negation, if you have A, notice how we have T and F for A, which are the possible, the only two possible outcomes for any statement is true or false. Notice how not A takes the opposite truth value, okay? And so truth tables really become useful, if you think about it, when we analyze much more complicated statements, 
okay, where it becomes very difficult just looking at it to see when it's true and when it's not, okay? So let's look at another example here, okay? And so 17, we have, uh, it says, create the truth table uh, for the statement A or not B, okay? The first thing we do is you write down the component statements for just A and B, right? The basic statements. And so again, we write down all the possible truth values for A and B. And then the next thing we do to build it is we take the next um, logical symbol in what we call the, the um, dominance. So we would do the not. The next logical one would be the not. So we would have a column for not B. So we would write down those, that, those truth values. And notice how column, the yellow column has the opposite truth values of the green column, right? And then once we do that, then we finally put it all together by looking at A or not B. Because now what we're doing is we're going to look at both columns for A and not B. And so remember, with OR statements, they're only true, or excuse me, only false if both of the component statements are false. So if we look at the A and the not B column, the two green columns, notice how the first one, we're, we're looking for two falses. If it if we can't, if we don't find a two false, if we don't have two falses, it has to be true. So the first one has two, has TF, so it has to be true, good. The second uh, row has true, true, so that's gonna be true. The third column, the third row has true, has false, false. So, so that has to be false. And then the last one has false, true, which means it's going to be true. And so we easily can fill out the last column by just remembering when is an OR statement false. Okay, so, and that's how um, we can figure this out. Okay, so the truth table shows that A or, excuse me, A or not B is true in three cases and false in one. If you're wondering what the point of this is, suppose that uh, it is the day that the baseball season and two teams who are not playing each other are competing for the final playoff spot. Anaheim will make the playoffs if it wins its game or if Boston does not win its game. Okay, so Anaheim owns the tiebreaker if both teams win or if both teams lose, then Anaheim gets the playoff spot. So if A equals Anaheim wins the game and B equals Boston wins the game, then A or not B represents the situation that Anaheim wins its game and Boston does not win its game. The truth table shows us the different scenarios related to Anaheim making the playoffs. In the first row, Anaheim wins its game and Boston wins its game. So it is true that Anaheim makes the playoffs. In the second row, Anaheim wins and Boston does not win, so it is true that Anaheim wins the, makes the playoffs. In the third row, Anaheim does not win its game, and Boston wins its game, so that means it's false that Anaheim makes the playoffs. In the fourth row, Anaheim does not win, and Boston does not win, so it's true that Anaheim makes the playoffs. So in this case, it tells you when is Anaheim going to make the playoffs, or more importantly, when does Anaheim not make the playoffs? Okay, and so now with the, the truth table uh, for the tri-3, we want to make a truth table for the statement not A and B. So the first thing we're going to do is make a truth table and fill in the table with the truth values doing the same thing that we just did. Okay, so let's see if I can draw a truth. I'll do it up here. So let's do a truth table. So the first thing I'm going to do is A and or A and B. So A and B. 
So we need to first write out all possible truth values. So the first column is going to be T, T, F, F. And then for B, what we're going to do is now we're going to uh, cut it in half again. So this time it's going to be T, F, T, F. And so now that gives me all the possible truth values. And so now we're going to do the negation. So the next, the third column is going to be the, the negation of A. And so the negation of A is going to be the opposite of the A column. So that's going to be F, F, T, T. And so now we're ready to do the AND. So with the AND column, we're going to do not A and B. And so now we're going to look at this column and this, this column. So now all we're going to do is, since it's an AND statement, we're looking for um, the only time it's true is if both of the component statements are true. So all we're looking for is two T's. If it's two T's, it's true. Otherwise, it's false. So we know that it's going to be looking at the two columns, it's going to be false false, true, false, and we're done. All right. So now let's look at another example here. It says create a truth table for the statement A and not the quantity B or C. Now this is more complicated, right? So again, the way we do our truth tables is we start with the component statements, right? So here we have three. So again, the way we're doing this is just notice the pattern. The first, col the first column is going to be half T's, half F's. The second column, we look at the top row of uh, A's with all T's. We're going to do half T's and half F's of that one. So notice half T's, half F's, and then half T's, half F's. And then, of course, the last column is going to be half and half again. So then it's TF. TF, TF, TF. And so if you always remember this pattern, then you'll always you'll never have to worry about missing uh, or duplicating or getting it wrong. Okay, so this will give us all eight possible combinations of truth and false for three component statements. Okay, now once we do this, then now we're ready to connect things, and we always want to connect from inside going out using what I call the dominance of the connectors, okay? So the first thing we do, just like order of operations, there is an order of how we wanna deal with truth tables. So in this case, we're gonna deal with everything in the parentheses first. So we're gonna deal with the B or C. Now remember, B or C, we're looking for, um, the only time it's false is if we have two Fs. So as long as we don't have two Fs, then it has to be true. So if we look here, the only time that it's going to be uh, false is here and here at the bottom. Otherwise, they're all true. And that's the way we fill it in. And now the next column is we're now going to negate that. So the next column is going to be this one, which is now just going to be the opposite of the green column. And so that's, we're just gonna put down the opposite truth values, okay? Now we're ready for the final uh, symbol, which is gonna be the, um, uh, the and, right? So now it's gonna be A and all of that, okay? So now we're finally ready for the last row because now it's just the AND statement. So now we're taking this column and this column, and now all we're looking for, is, because it's an AND, is we're looking for when it's true. And the only time it's true is if we have two T's. 
So if we look down the the column, the the rows, the only time we have two T's is the fourth um, uh, the fourth column, or the, excuse me, the fourth row. Otherwise, everything else is going to be false. So, and then we're finally we're finished. Okay. So the only time this statement is going to be true is when we have what? These, this situation where A is true and B and C are both false. That's the only time that the statement will be true. Okay. And, and we wouldn't have known that or it'd be very difficult to see that just by looking at it. So that's, again, truth tables are really uh, useful in this case. Now, it turns out that this complex expression is true only in one case. Like I said, when A is true, B is false, and C is false. To illustrate the situation, suppose that Anaheim will make the playoffs if, one, Anaheim wins, and two, neither Boston nor Cleveland wins. TFF is the only scenario in which Anaheim will make the playoffs. Okay. All right. We'll stop. Uh, or actually, let's do the, let's do this. Try it. Let's do this. Okay. So let's do our truth table. Okay, so we've got <clears throat> A and B, right? So we've got A and B, so we only have two. So if we have A and B, so we've got true, true, false, false. And then we got true, false, true, false and now we're going to take the and or no not we want to take the tilde now we've got two nots we've got not a and we've got not b so now we're going to take the opposite of a so this is going to be false false true true and then not b is going to be false true, false, true. Now we're going to take um, what's in parentheses. So we're going to take not A and B. So not A and B. And so what are we going to get? We're going to get not A and B. So we're looking at um, the middle two columns. So again, we're looking for two F's will make it false. Or excuse me, two, two, two T's to make it true. And so otherwise it's false. So this is going to be false, false, true, false. And now we're going to put it all together with the or. So now the final one is going to be not A and B or not B. So sorry for being sloppy here. So now it's an or statement. So what are we looking at? We're looking at this column and this column. So all we're looking for is two F's. So the only time an or statement is false is when we have both components are false. So the first one's going to be false. The second one's going to be true. Uh, the rest of them are going to be true. And there you go. That's our table. We're done.